they said, my son just admitted that he struggles with porn. How can I help him? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm curious, uh, a few pieces of information or details that I'd like to know. Is your son, you know, 15 or is he 25 or kind of 35 or 45? And so I'm not really sure what stage of life your son is in when he's kind of making this admission. But we'll maybe uh, assume that he's a teenager, that either uh, mid-teens, late teens, high school, college age, somewhere in that range. First of all, kudos to him, man. It takes guts to be able to uh, own that I'm struggling with something that I don't feel good about uh, and I need help because of my own efforts to try to manage this are not working so well. And uh, I just need to invite uh, someone else in the circle. So good for him and having the kind of courage to step out and invite help and good for you as a parent, right? That I was gonna say, they, they raised a great kid. Yeah, raised a great kid, but also that there's safety in the relationship, right? That he felt like he could bring that to you. Yeah. There's, there's lots of uh, kids that, you know, don't feel like they could bring that sort of thing to their parent. And so I'm thankful that uh, you guys have the kind of relationship where he feels like he's able to bring that and disclose that and look to you for help with that and have the uh, expectation that you're not going to be judgmental or attacking or demeaning or beating up around that, but that you're going to have compassion and care about where he's at and want to be able to be helpful to him and figuring out what to do. So it's a good question. Uh, there are a number of articles that we have on the website and videos that speak specifically to how to navigate this conversation with uh, your sons. I'll just grab a couple of highlights from some of that to say, yeah, start with, uh, again, doing the same thing that I just did and being affirming of the courage that it takes from to bring that to and appreciating the relationship that's there that enables that to be the case. That the enemy wants to use uh, shame, this kind of idea that you're unworthy of love and acceptance uh, to create isolation, which really keeps us vulnerable. And so to, to face that and come through that and risk putting yourself out there is a really courageous thing. And you, and you wanna make sure that you obliterate any shame around that and be able to go, listen, and I'm glad that you came to me I respect you for doing so. We're gonna figure this out and uh, I'm gonna be here for you and it's gonna be okay, right? There's a, a need for him to know your acceptance and your respect and your love for him isn't changed, impacted or undermined because he's having a struggle with something, right? Another piece that we wanna kind of work through is to be able to make sure that not only is this struggle not a um, deal breaker or hindrance in your love for him, it's also not that way in his relationship with God. And a lot of times the enemy wants to send the message that God's angry with you and displeased with you and disgusted with you and that there's he doesn't want to hear from you or be around you because you're having some sort of a, a struggle like this. And then we uses that to keep people isolated from God, that dynamic. And you can help uh, speak to that by speaking on God's behalf, right? That you, as a parent, you are a revealer of the Father, you know, that you help your kids know what God's like by the way that you relate to them. And, and so you can affirm that, uh, that the love of the Father is, is unhindered you know, by the fact that he's struggling with something, you know, that there's a, uh, a love that transcends their shortcomings and struggles, and that his relationship uh, with the Lord isn't contingent on or hinged on uh, his ability to do everything right all the time. It's a beautiful thing about the gospel is it's not about us being able to be good enough or work good enough in order to be in relationship 
but it's about the perfect sacrifice of Christ that justifies us and makes us right in relationship and that the uh, father sees us through the lens of that and that yeah. we're accepted by him and that that i mean applies to so much more than just this this specific struggle so many of us that need to hear that message yes yes absolutely so that would be the starting place kind of foundation just kind of this relational context that's there i'd also really encourage you to be affirming of uh, his sexual desire. Like it's not weird for a teenager to be interested in the opposite sex. Like that's pretty much how God wired his body to be. And so that's not a sign of the curse. Uh, while it may feel like a curse to many uh, teenagers and, and single men, that that's not a uh, sign of the curse. That that's actually part of the design that the creator wired that into him and that he would have a curiosity and an interest and an attraction to the female form is ways made. It's the way it's supposed to be in that. And so I don't want to demonize or shame around really normal kind of sexual desire and arousal kind of response that's wired into his body by God on purpose in that. Instead, we want to we want to think about it in terms of stewardship. And that's the, the word and the concept that I think is really helpful for us to, to use when considering our sexuality and how we navigate our sexuality. It's to see it as something precious and valuable that the Lord has given us, and that's fun and great and good uh, and designed for being shared with our spouse. And that stewarding it in a way that uh, honors its design and protects our heart and protects our future in terms of our experience and expression of that is what we are after. And so we're looking at, in that context, why, why would we, why would we not want to have pornography be a part of our life? You know, how does it hurt us? What are the things that it kind of takes away from us and robs us of uh, in a way that we would want to protect our heart um, and future relationship and our uh, sexual expression from those things and to educate, communicate around those things. And then to kind of talk about what it means to take ownership of that stewardship for oneself and um, kind of practical ways of uh, stewarding or making decisions about uh, what I'm going to engage or not engage and where and when and so on in order to make decisions and support decisions that protect that. So that would be kind of the starting place for that dialogue. There's a lot more that can be said, a lot of articles and videos that we have put out around the subject, uh, but that should get you started. Yeah, that's awesome. Guys, I was I was thinking the same thing. You know, there are so many articles and, and so many different counselors that have talked about this. And, you know, it is it can be a, a big struggle for, you know, the teenager or whoever is struggling with this addiction. And it can also be a struggle for the parents, you know, who are having to navigate this conversation that they probably didn't expect to have to have, you know, so um, definitely encourage those watching um, if this hits close to home to Hop on and see if you can find something that just speaks to you and, and helps you in this. Yeah, and I just want to add to that, that it, if you have a teenager, it, it hits close to home, right? That God wired us as sexual creatures, uh, all of us. And so the reality of this being something that needs to be talked about and navigated isn't just for like those kids. It's for all kids. We all kind of need to have an awareness of these issues and, and be intentional about how we navigate and steward our sexuality as a single person, as a married person, at every stage of life. And so it's, it's just a topic that we need to talk about. And uh, contrary to sometimes popular belief, you know, that this is a conversation you need to have with your daughters as much as it is with your sons. Right? Yeah, exactly what I was about to say. Yes. Yeah. And so there can be this mythology around it that pornography is, is only a kind of a male struggle or a male issue, but that's just not true. 
that there's a lot of research that shows the contrary and a lot of just as counselors kind of practical uh, knowledge from working with folks that that's just not true. And so make sure you're having the conversation with your daughters as well. Thank <music> you.